So by now, you've probably come across some of my 3D models, and you've probably asked yourself, what is that crazy technique where they load in from a load of points, and then all of a sudden, you get this amazing visualization of a tree? Well, it's called Luma. And unlike photogrammetry, these are 3D Gaussians. And whilst they may look really crazy and hard to do, actually, they're relatively simple if you use a tool like Luma and follow some tried and tested rules. So having said that, here's some of my top tips to help you get the best from Luma AI. Right, let's get to it. So tip number one is increase your shutter speed. The higher your shutter speed, the less motion blur you're likely to get, and the result, the sharper the image. And obviously, if you're on a phone, that might be tricky, but if you're using the latest iPhone or one of the latest models of phones, you're more likely to be able to change and dial in your shutter speed settings. If you're on a camera, it's less of an issue. Tip number two is to use a small aperture and a wide depth of field. We're not going for dreamy bokeh like you get in some landscape photography. We're going for sharp, in-focus images and video. Tip number three is pace. You don't really want to be moving too quickly. Really, if you're moving more than one step a second, then you're moving too quickly. So you must really slow it down. Obviously, as the scan goes on, you get a little bit more tired of holding your phone or camera in a very steady position, as stabilized as possible. Things get a little bit harder to do. Keep your speed dialed low. Oh, and here's a little bonus tip. You can always try and put some slow paced music on, whack your headphones on and work to that. Now I know what you're thinking. What about resolution and FPS? Well, 4K is always preferable, but if you haven't got 4K, use what you've got. The same with FPS. The higher the frames per second, the better. But if you use 30, it works just as well. So what about the choice of lens? Well, the golden rule is use a lens that can go as wide as possible. So obviously if you're using a DSLR camera, then you can choose like a 12 to 25 mil, something like that. Or if you're on an iPhone, head over to your camera settings, zoom out to 0 0.5, or if you're on Android or a Google phone, 0 0.7, but pull that lens as far back as it will go, capture more of the environment, in less time. Now the next biggest tip and one of the hardest to achieve without a gimbal or a tripod is stabilization. Now when you're using your phone or you're using a digital camera handheld and you're going at that one step per second that we talked about earlier on in the video then it's going to be really really hard to maintain stabilized footage and from using it for a while now I can tell you that putting it into post, putting it into DaVinci Resolve, Premiere Pro, trying to stabilize it digitally that way in post-production it doesn't render very good results. So you want to try and get your footage as stabilized as possible straight out of the camera. So what about when it comes to shooting vertical or horizontal? It really doesn't matter. Use both. Oh, but just to clarify, don't use them both at the same time. Found a cool new home. Okay, so what about when it actually comes to scanning a complete object? Well, what you want to do is you want to take your phone or your camera and you want to start off in the middle. You want to go around in three circles, one in the middle, one higher and one lower. When you're in the middle, it's really important to remember that one step per second. Keep the face of your camera or your camera direction as parallel to the face of the object you're scanning as possible. When you go higher, tilt your phone down. When you go lower, tilt your phone back up towards the surface. But what about when you're capturing the scene and the environment around you and not necessarily an object that's in the center of the frame? And what you want to do is imagine that there is a box or a cube in the middle of the subject that you're trying to gather. So in this open space here, you can imagine there's a cube here and then work your way around that cube in the same fashion. So is this the same for drones? And the honest answer is no. You don't want to go eye level, high level, low level. We've actually found when we've experimented with drones and Luma AI, that the best way is to do one single pass at about a 30 degree angle, go all the way around, orbit your subject, and that's it. And you're probably wondering, well, what's the reason for that single orbit pass? And it seems to be that the higher the elevation you go, obviously the worse the picture quality becomes. If you're using a DJI Mini or something like that, you're probably working with a fixed aperture, an aperture that you can't actually change, and you're working with the sensor size. You know, they're limited by small sensors. To get a camera on a small drone, you've got to use a pretty small camera, which means you're restricted to a pretty small sensor size. The higher you go, those pixels actually start to lose quality. So I'm going to end the video in a rather unusual way by giving you guys an apology, basically. One of my unwritten rules is that I want to try and tear down gatekeeping in the industry. I don't want people to hold on to information. And I'll be honest, Luma AI, I have been holding on to. I've been keeping it from you. Some of you have figured it out, worked it out. Some of you have 
asked me for advice on it and some of you I've actually actively shown you've been getting some amazing scans of veterans and ancient trees like this wonderful thing here.